Shalom, brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the mighty, precious, beautiful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and soon coming King. Um, I had a vision last night, or oh, this morning, that I need to share with the body of Christ. I believe this one is for the Lord's true remnants. Not everybody this message is going to be for, but I pray that everybody can prepare themselves that this message can also be for them so um basically in this vision i was on a hill maybe, maybe like steps so behind me it got higher and higher and higher and at the top of the hill before it became a downhill there was women and children and as you got lower and lower and lower, there was army, soldiers. It was a war going on. And in this war now, the enemy was in front of us. We was outnumbered. He was also outgunned. And um, what well, we was battling. Amen. And I was actually on the front line. Actually, I was so much on the front line that at each step that goes back there was me on the first step then there was a few people on the back steps and a few people on the other steps and so my bullets was limited my grenades was limited so I had to strategically shoot when I could hit more than one person with one bullet otherwise I had to duck and take cover I had to strategically throw a grenade when there was groups of the enemy in one place because I couldn't afford to waste one grenade on one person I was outnumbered and outgunned so I'm warring, I'm warring, I'm warring, I'm warring but as I'm warring I'm retreating because the enemy was advancing so I have to war and retreat I'm warring and retreating, I'm warring and retreating, I'm throwing grenades, I'm shooting my rifle, I'm throwing grenades, I'm shooting my rifle. Bullets got low, grenades got low, so I basically had to catch the grenades that they throw and throw it back. Those of you who have way of grenades and stuff, there's a certain amount of seconds before it actually explodes. So if you can get it in time and throw it back, then it will blow up on the other side so I've been throwing back their own grenades at them I've been I'm warring I'm warring I'm retreating here's how the dream gets interesting brothers and sisters as I wore and retreated and I got back to the top of this hill now because the enemy was advancing so I couldn't stay in one position and war I had to retreat and war retreat war retreat war I got to the top where the women and the children were I looked behind me to see how the other soldiers was doing all the men was gone this whole time I was fighting this whole battle by myself this whole time and so I didn't lose the battle the women and the children were safe but I woke up and I was like in my spirit like what kind of battle is this where I'm the only one on the battlefield and this don't make no sense I'm sure brothers and sisters are out there in Christ on the battlefield too I know this is a spiritual dream and this is the enemy and whatever so God revealed to me that the women and the children are the babies in Christ the Bible calls some Christians babe but the Bible says that we should feed them milk because they're not ready for meat because they're new to the faith when their faith is stronger we can give them meat either way we need to give them spiritual food Amen Jesus told Peter if you love me feed my sheep he meant that spiritual food that's why he says I am the bread of life and I am that living running water so we are meant to feed God's sheep but the Lord has revealed to me that you being alone on the battlefield symbolizes the people that you preach to and they just don't want to listen the people that I send you with messages to and they don't want to listen so much so is that like you are alone and he says whether they listen to you or not 
continue to bring my messages because the, the other soldier men that left, they're the one that didn't want to hear the message. Otherwise, they would have been in that position to be as strong as I was on the battlefield. But because they took the message in one ear and it went out the other ear, when it came down to the crunch time, we're in the middle of this war now. Let's see what you can do, my brother. They were left me on the battlefield all by myself. And the Lord said, I must stand alone if I have to. Amen. Because they might not appreciate the message, but the women and children appreciate the fact that by myself, I did not run away and leave them. Amen. And the Lord gave me two scripture because this ties into also false doctrines. Many people have false doctrines. This is why they're so weak in the faith. Amen. So the first scripture the Lord gave me is Jeremiah 51, 45. My people, go out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Lord. Some of us go into circles where the grace of God isn't there. We go into circles where people have fellowship with the work of darkness and because we know we're anointed we think it's okay to just go there and congregate that's our opinion if you want to bring a message and share a message fair enough but you cannot be sitting in the midst at the table of the enemy you cannot serve two masters amen and even in revelation chapter 18 chapter 18 verse 4 it says and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and ye that ye not receive of her plagues jeremiah is telling you that the anger of the lord is going to kindle up on them and and, and 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 revelation is telling you that the lord is going to put plagues onto them so get away from them do not be in the midst of them otherwise you are also going to be partakers of their plagues and this is a symbol of the false doctrine, the false teaching. Amen. The lukewarm churches, the lukewarm believers. Jesus is coming back soon. So it's one thing to tell a brother, oh, Jesus says don't drink and don't smoke. If he wants to sit there and tell you, well, God still blesses me every day and I'm still alive and Jesus paid for my sins so I can do what I want. You gave him the message, leave, because plagues are coming to him. You stay there with him at his table, you're going to get the plague too. The Lord said, come out of it, come out of it. In this particular scripture, he was talking about leaving Babylon because Babylon is going to get plagues. But many churches are also Babylons. Churches that don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He just bring back to my revelation now. I was in another church. I was in a church. The dream shifted. After that, thank you, Jesus. Seen, seen, seen changes. I'm now in a big church. And in this church was Hillsong. It was a building of theirs. And I remember once when I went to a Hillsong convention. And after they sang and sang and sang and sang. The past, the leading pastor came on the stage and took the mic. And the first thing he said was. Because I sat there and I'm like, why don't I feel the Holy Spirit? Why is all these people closing their eyes and searching, searching? No one ain't crying in the Holy Spirit. No, why? I'm a, I feel so heavy right now. Why don't I feel the presence of God? And I was, the Lord was, I was saying to the Lord, like, what's going on? If your people are worshipping so many hundreds and thousands of us, why can't I not feel your presence, Lord? And he told me, I'm not here. This is not worship song. This is noise. This is not glory to me. This is rock and roll music. And as the Lord said that to me, the man came and took the mic. You know what the man said? The man said, at least we are truly worshipping God and we don't make that noise, that gibberish, that talking in funny languages and funny tongues like some of those other Christians. The brother was blaspheming the Holy Spirit. The Bible says there's no forgiveness for that. He openly on stage called speaking in tongues gibberish. But yet still so many brothers and sisters in Christ run to congregate with ill song because oh they sing nice songs. The devil was the author of music in heaven. When David played the harp it brought the presence of God. Do you not think there's other music that you can play that does not bring the presence of God but bring the presence of the enemy? And because you sing a song and feel good you think that means that's the presence of God? 
When I used to go clubbing, love songs used to make me feel good. Celine Dion would sing a song and I would cry my eyes out. That wasn't the presence of God. When I was in the club listening to dance our music, certain songs made me feel so happy. But his music was about violence and sex and drugs. That wasn't the presence of God. So the body of Christ will ever have discernment in this in these last days. And it all ties in into the reason why I was on the battlefield by myself. Because they do not have the true gospel. This is why the Lord says, many will say, Lord, Lord, and I'll tell them, depart from me, I never knew you. You don't know the Lord. You're not sensitive to his presence or his voice. I'm not condemning Hillsong's followers because I'm saying if we pray for them, God can save them. But the Bible says, have no fellowship with the work of darkness, but rather reprove them, correct them, and take yourself away. Someone out there needs to hear this message because you're preaching to somebody and they're not listening and you keep allowing them to condemn your soul. Somebody needs to hear this because they're in a church where they openly with their eyes can see things that contradict the word of God but yet still they continue to go there every week and leave heavy. The Lord says, come out of her, my people. And when you come out of her, pray for them. Don't condemn nor hate them. But you have to pray for them to have the revelation that God has given you because they are also spiritually blind. The Bible said those that have hair but hear not and have eyes but see not. So I just wanted to share this, 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 this vision that I had just so you can understand that it's not just me the Lord's telling me if you have to stand alone, stand alone. My brother, if you have to stand alone, stand alone. My sister, if you have to stand alone, stand alone. Amen. Have no fellowship with the works of darkness. Some of us are truly seeking the Lord. Only wanted to please Him. And others want to please man. They want to please flesh. They want to look good to other people. They want to look good in the mirror. None of that's got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. You have to be sensitive to what the Lord is doing. There's no point going around talking about Jesus coming back. And you're still preaching prosperity messages, talking about Jesus coming back, and you're still preaching about carnal blessings. Jesus is coming back, but you're not preaching holiness. Jesus is coming back, but yeah, come as you are. Yes, my brother, come as you are, because I used to go to church in shorts, and I used to burn a spliff outside the church before I go in. What's the point of me still doing that five years later? Talk about the Lord, accept me as I am. The congregation can be sick, yes. Because the church is a hospital, so go as you are and be transformed by the renewal of your mind. But do not stay there if you're not being transformed. And if you look on the pulpit and the people up there is living in the same sins that you're living in, something is wrong. The altar is meant to be a holy place. Be an example. So if I'm, if I'm looking at the person on the altar or the pulpit or the worship leaders and they're in sin... Why am I going to be compelled to let go of my sins if they're the leaders of the church? If I'm telling my brother in Christ, listen, the Lord wants you to go deeper in him. He says it's time to stop drinking or stop smoking or whatever. It's been years you've been in the faith and they're still sitting there telling you this foolishness. Do not go to their congregation. Especially if the leaders of this church are the ones who are being the example. The Bible says, make any man who preach my word live it. Or well, stay away from it. There are good churches out there with good leaders. But I'm just saying. When you find yourself in a church. Where these leaders ain't living what they're preaching. Or God's growing you so deep in the faith. That you can see sin all over the pulpit. It's best you stay at home in your closed doors. And worship the Lord there. This message is from the Lord for this church. In these last days. Do not let your soul be contaminated. Because you love people. Do not let your soul be contaminated because of false doctrines or false teachers. Do not let your soul be contaminated because people got titles over you. If you know what the Lord is telling you, be obedient to the Lord first. Before your friends, your loved ones, your pastor, everybody. Pray for them. But plagues are coming. And the Lord says, anyone that's in the midst of her shall receive their plague. plagues. He says, his anger is being kindled up against them. 
Do not be there when judgment comes on them, brothers and sisters. Pray for them and take yourself away. Shalom.